I'm so glad you all made the right choice in coming to hear my friend Dwayne speak. Dwayne comes to us from San Francisco. He has been to WordCamp Phoenix several times. He loves this region, so thank you for joining him when he teaches us that nobody wants a website, they want results. Give it up for Dwayne. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody give it up for Claudia. She does an amazing job. First volunteer up this morning to introduce someone. She's fantastic. I've decided to call an audible, and uh, wow, I got all some feedback here. Uh, whoa, yeah, I think, is this mic still up? Okay, maybe. Um, I decided to call an audible, and we're gonna learn bash scripting instead. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, but I'm Dwayne, I work at Pantheon. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, but I well, do love Phoenix, I do love this area. It's about the fifth time I've been here. First time I've ever seen it rain in Phoenix. Uh, well, I was amazed by that. Uh, come on in, come on in. Um, outside of doing tech, outside of stuff that I'm gonna talk about today, if you ever wanna talk to me about uh, comic books or web comics or crochet, I do less finger knitting these days, but I love crochet, uh, or karaoke. I love karaoke a lot. Uh, I am on Twitter. I love Twitter. I think it's the best social media platform for events that ever existed. And I would love for you all to be on Twitter with me. In fact, if you take a picture and put it on Twitter, I would really appreciate that. Um, oh yeah, all my slides and stuff are over at mcdwayne.com. That's my website. And that's where you can find the slides for this and pretty much everything else I do, including the travel schedule of where you can kind of see me at upcoming shows. Uh, I work at Pantheon. We're a website operations platform. We help people operate their websites in a way that is possible, obviously, without us, but in a way that is more easily attainable to iterate on websites faster or for a team to cohesively work together on a larger project. Scale is what we're really all about. Some, some of the largest websites in the world, ACLU, the Boston Herald, patch.com, run them Pantheon, and we can help you just the same we help them. Come talk to us, we're happy to talk to you. I wanna know who's in the room, who saw this on the schedule and said, I wanna go and see that talk this morning. Good, for the rest of you, the, the door's that way. Um, who said, uh, hey, I am a business person and I wanna go be a business talk? Business people? All right, I'll, I'll tell you it la less uh, strangely. Who, uh, who's a developer in the room? Awesome. Who does it all? Who is like, they do the whole ball of wax? Awesome. Is anybody here just a designer? You're not just a designer, design is super important and thank you for your job, sir. Um, is there anyone in here that is a project manager? Surprise, this talk is actually for you. This is gonna try to make your life a lot easier in the long run. So why am I talking about the fact that nobody wants a website if I'm in a WordCamp? Well, I was talking back at WordCamp Baltimore in 2017 and somebody in the audience during my talk about discovery raised his hand and gave one of those questions that was really a comment uh, of how a website should unite a brand under a current common theme and blah, blah, blah. And I like, it took me aback. I never heard anyone say that before. And I said, I don't think so. I think a website does what a website does because nobody actually wants a website. They want what a website gives them. And that's, when I said that, half the room did this. <laughs> and the other half of the room did this. And it was one of those moments where I said, there's a conversation that needs to be had here. There's a conversation that I don't think I am 100% qualified to be the expert in. And I firmly believe that in this room right now, collectively in all of your heads, you have more knowledge about this subject than I can possibly have. And the only way we are going to get better with everything we do is to share. That's why we're at WordCamp in the first place. So, Later on, when I start the Q&A, I want to have a conversation with you. And for those people with mics running around so we can capture this, it's going to be a little hard, but we're going to make this an active conversation with you. Um, and I'll do my best to put this on WordPress TV in an in a easy way for them to consume. But before we get to all that, I need a volunteer that's a little bit hungry because, you know, it's still in the middle of the morning. Who, who here wants a sandwich? I want somebody that's hungry, that's hungry. Anybody here, like, even a little bit? Way in the back, way in the back. Come on up here. Come on up. Give her a round of applause, everybody. She, she was brave. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I do. Uh, introduce yourself for the fine people at home. I'm Vicky. This is Vicky. Deluzio. Deluzio. 
That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm speaking also later. So she's speaking. What time are you speaking? Um, 11.50. 11 11.50. Yeah. Go see your talk. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's just agree that a sandwich, we, we all agree, we know what a sandwich is. All right. So here's your sandwich. Are you satisfied with this? It looks a little plasticky for my liking. You know what? I understand exactly what's wrong here. Nobody likes the cheese. If I remove the cheese, does uh, is this, is this, is this satisfy you? Is this, is this what you wanted as a sandwich? If I, if I could take the, the cheese off of it. Particularly, I'm going to add more onions and mustard, and we're going to swap, toast the bread a little bit. It just like melts it a little bit. Uh, it, would that satisfy you? I could deal with it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Go, go, go sit down. Of course, no one wants the sandwich made of plastic. But just swapping things out, I can't possibly solve the fundamental problem. This isn't what she wanted at all. I ask who was hungry. There's no way this can feed her. There's no way this constitutes the expectation, because that's really what it comes down to with everything. If we can line up the expectation with the result, people are happy. My expectations for this slide, that it would say expectations and results. I can see the designers in the room cringe, because <laughs> I had no other expectations. When we don't align our expectations and results, bad things happen. Sometimes they're fun bad things, but people, really get cranky and downright furious when they put money on the line and we simply don't deliver on what they expected, even if they don't know what they were asking for. And that leaves us in the industry, every single person in this room with a bad reputation overall for people that don't know what we do. This is an actual quote from an actual CMO in Silicon Valley, a friend of mine, we were drunk one night and this is, uh, at the time, it was a quarter million dollar project. It spiraled beyond that later. But he said, Dwayne, developers don't take their fiduciary responsibilities seriously. We pay them good money to figure out how to make the best website to meet our needs. It's up to them to figure out those goals. How many people think that this CMO is going to recommend that same agency to anyone else he knows in Silicon Valley? Yeah, exactly. No one a hand went up. And he won't. Because he got a quarter million dollars into the project before anybody on that web team said, so what are you trying to measure? We'll get to that. The problem, fundamentally, is that we see ourselves in a single role, a lot. Not everyone, for those of you doing it all, I see you're probably wearing a lot of hats, but there's one that you like relish. There's one that when you think, what do I actually get to deliver? When you actually get to your real work, you're doing a thing. And for some people, it's web development and they want to sit behind and write PHP code or, J, uh, or a JavaScript, or they want to actually write a thing. The problem is, if we're selling that service, a lot of the time, people that don't know how all of this works, they don't know what a website is, think we're all of this, all at once. So while we have this picture in our head of what we do, this is what the people wanting a website think you're going to do. If we step way back from the problem set of, well, how do we make that sandwich better by swapping things around or putting different ingredients on it or changing the format a little bit and say, well, what are we actually trying to solve? You pretty quickly come to the realization that, wait a minute, they don't want a fancy website. They don't want to be Facebook. They don't want that. They want four people a day to buy a thing. We can start thinking of the problems different. This is my favorite quote from Candace from WoofComp. Um, we're not designing a chair, but a human suspension system. We need to look at what we're actually, actually, actually trying to accomplish and step way back. And I think the time to do that is very, very early in the conversation. It's your process. If you follow this process or you have another map system, it's all good. It's all a process. This is the way I learned how about processes from my 12 years in sales uh, and a few years in marketing. All projects work kind of like this. Let's imagine everyone in this room, I have a lead from you, which means I have your email address. And I send all everybody emails, and I say what I am capable of doing, and you say, hey, I would like to maybe engage with you about that thing that you do. You're now a qualified lead because, well, you want the thing. And then I qualify you further, and then we'll do a whole series of discovery to make sure that, hey, we can actually do the exact thing you want. I will write that down, we will buy it, or you will buy it, I will deliver it. This is every project you've ever done. 
If you buy an ice cream cone, you go through this whole process. It's just very fast. And transactional, doesn't really matter. I've been involved in 18 and two-year sales cycles before, 18 months and two-year sales cycles before. Uh, you get stuck in the middle a lot. Discovery is where you're gonna spend a lot more time than you think you're going to, and we're gonna talk about that later. But I think we can actually save a lot of time in the discovery process by doing the qualification process a little more intelligently, a little more attentively, and thinking about what we're trying to deliver before we even talk about what we're delivering. We're trying instead talking about what they want. So if we take the qualification process and really dig into it, who here knows what a qualification process is? Has ever been any training whatsoever about this? Okay, so this is brand new for a lot of folks in the room. In the qualification process, you're trying to answer some very, very minimally basic questions to figure out if you should spend time with someone or not. The qualification process should be very, very quick and efficient. It might take a little bit longer in a larger sales cycle, but it should be pretty quick. And these are the basic four questions that you're trying to answer. Do you have a budget? Can you actually pay for the thing? Do you have the authority to make that purchasing decision? Do you actually need this thing? And do you have a timeline? My favorite thing as a sales guy is if you don't have a timeline, you don't have a project. If you don't have a drop dead date, there's no way you're gonna get it done. Uh, I also subscribe to other versions of this, Scotsman, Mean Act, they're all the same. Um, there's a preset list of things you need to identify that people have or they don't. And then we'll go on to spend more time in discovery. And if we can mechanize this as much as humanly possible, at the same time of stepping back and saying, well, what are you actually trying to accomplish in an intelligent, repeatable way? You're gonna spend almost no actual human time on the qualification process. Now, let's go back for just a second. Notice how the funnel's very, very big at the top. There's an awful lot of people to qualify in the world versus how many proposals you write. Where do you actually wanna spend your time in this funnel, your actual day-to-day actual -day time? Anybody? Anybody? Delivery. Delivery, that's 100%, thank you. 24 hours in a day, you wanna spend eight hours a day doing delivery, which means you need to spend eight plus N doing procurement, and then eight plus N plus F for qualification, and N plus, then you get the idea. There's not enough hours in the day to do this if you do this by hand piecemeal in a unique fashion every single time. So let's mechanize it. Asking someone, do you have a budget? It's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna tell you about that. Do you have a timeline? Again, straightforward, I'm not gonna talk about that. Do you have the authority to do this? You guys know how to ask that. Need. All the years I spent in sales, I took this one for granted the most. Because if you're talking to me, obviously you need my product. Why else would you be talking to me? And that was how I thought about it. And that's wrong. A need is a goal. A need is a thing that they're trying to accomplish. And asking them what their actual goal is, is tricky. Because they, I want a website to sell a thing. Like, okay, but what are you actually trying to get done? That's why we can rely on beautiful systems that I didn't make up, that other very, very intelligent people wrote books on. Smart goals. I love this. This is one of my favorite things I've ever used in my life. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound. Because we're getting back to that whole Bant idea again. Time-bound, relevant. Relevant, you're never going to know for sure. If you're, especially if you're an internal project. If you're external, you're never going to know if it's relevant to the rest of their business needs or not. Unless, we'll talk about that later. But uh, if you're internal, you can kind of ask this. Is this really relevant to what we're doing? But more importantly, if you're on a project, is, is it attainable? Can we actually do this thing? And really, the most important one's the M. Can we measure it? How do we know when we're done? When do we know we've succeeded? Luckily, there's a science behind this. You can call this whatever you want. I prefer KPI over OKR or whatever else you want to call it, all the other acronym soups of it. But key performance indicators, uh, the general topic is pretty easy. Um, and in the simplest terms, it's a yes or no. It's, it's a percentage, it's, it's a raw number. Uh, for instance, my laptop here. Uh, is my laptop on or not? Just based on looking at it. Yes. yes. Uh, why, why did you say that? Well, because you've got the light there. The light. 
the light is indicating there's a key performance going on. That's what a key performance indicator is. It's simply a number that indicates a thing happened or it didn't. A thing is happening. A number of people did this thing or a number of people didn't. That's all it is. It's simple, a number you can look up. And if we can bake this in early to the process to understand what their KPIs are, it's gonna save us so much time down the road. And in a five minute conversation, you'll be able to quickly tell, I can help you or I am gonna walk away. Oh, I can do this project with what you told me or we really need to dig in here before I am willing to sit down and do a full scope project internally. And just figure out the business needs. What are we actually trying to accomplish with the business when you want this landing page? Now in a perfect world, we could just flat out ask this. But you're gonna get blank stares if you ask this. Just blank. In a perfect world, someone will say, oh, I'm glad you asked. Here's my spreadsheet with 12 pages, or 12 uh, tabs in it, and here's what we gotta deliver, and here's the timeline for it. Work with that person. If you ever meet that person, work for them. Immediately, just take that job with no questions asked. Um, if, we don't, uh, if we don't dig into, um, if we don't qualify enough first, we're gonna spend a lot of time discovering with people that we don't want to spend time in discovery with. We're not going to discover that they don't know what they're doing until it's way too late and you've spent hours and hours of paid discovery with them or unpaid discovery with, the, with them, which is even worse. If you talk to someone and they say, I got all these KPIs figured out, that's awesome. But more people are going to start explaining their business idea. And unfortunately, a lot of business ideas aren't thought through. And if you're getting more and more confused about what they want to do the more they talk to you, that's a very bad sign, that's a red flag. If they can't tell you the business value of why you're doing a thing, start asking the questions a little bit differently. I mean, an easy question, even if they don't know what a KPI is. Oh, I thought I had that slide in here. Yeah, easy qualification question is, what are we measuring? I slipped flip sides last night, forgot. Um, what, what are we gonna measure? Now, as a web developer, and speaking to web developers, would everybody agree these are generally good KPIs for a, for a, um, a website? You better, because this is like what Google told me was the KPIs for a website. Um, unfortunately, um, marketing's KPIs are a little different. And again, this is what Google told me after multiple search results. And unfortunately, the people that actually bring the money in the door have these results that they're looking for. And ultimately, the people that report to the board or just the president of the company has this. And if you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know how we can get to any of these, that's okay. Because sometimes, you're gonna to wanna to change hats and say, look, I don't know how we can get there, but I can help you get there. And we're gonna do a little data science. But now, I'm gonna become, change hat, a business consultant. Who in the room thinks that a web developer, developing WordPress websites, and a business consultant should be paid the same rate? Not a single hand went up. How many people doing web development projects have ever given free business advice? <laughs> Every hand in the room went up. That's ever, ever 90% of the room. Because data science is a different project. And we're gonna dig in and figure out how to measure these things and how to interrelate all of those numbers. Because it's just math. If you look at what you're trying to accomplish, you can say, look, I need to get this metric. This metric is made up of these metrics. These metrics are made up of these metrics. Don't use this verbatim in your business, it'll fail. <laughs> uh, but you can start mapping things and say, look, we can get to here because I can show evidence of this, 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 and this working. And these should all indicate that this is working. We're gonna add all these things together and show you, on paper, we measured success. We're done. And if they go along with that, they'd be like, that's a good idea, we should do that. Charge them the business consulting money and be on your way, and then come back and sell them, again, the web development services, different contract, different rate. But do you wanna change hats? If you don't, how many people know somebody that specializes in business consulting? No, raise your hand super high. Go, look around, look around. If you don't know somebody that currently knows some, if you currently don't know anybody that does business consulting, somebody's got their hand up right now, find them later, out in the halls. If you see them, say, hey, you had your hand up. Uh, who's that business consultant you know? 
because you need to know a business consultant if you don't want to be a business consultant yourself. So introduce yourselves. But that's not just business consulting, it's everything. And know which hats you want to wear. Know which specific hats you want to wear. And ask people, again, at the qualification stage, the first five minutes you're talking about what they want to do, what's your plan around? Fill in the blank. Everybody can answer those questions, or again, they will start getting very confused and frustrated, and that's a very big red flag and a bad sign. Asking the question, what's your plan around this content strategy? How many people have ever started a project, and then you find out the client wants you to deliver all of the content? Yeah. This is the number one question I use to get out of work. Uh, when people say, I want to build a website, I'm like, what's your content strategy? And nobody ever comes back, except my sister. She did an awesome job. Um, but I built her an awesome one. Yeah, it's simple. Simple theme. Um, same thing for design services. Backend web development is not design. People outside of this industry, people that don't build websites for a living or aren't involved in the space, they don't know that. They don't know what a front-end developer is. They don't know what React is. They have no concept of PHP. They think it's all the same. So ask them, what, who's your designer? What's the design plan? Because should, should a front-end designer and a PHP developer be the exact same job? They could be. You can wear both hats. Project management is one of my favorite ones to ask about. Uh, this won't really apply if you're doing like a very, very small business, but if you're working for any size company with like a web or a, a marketing team, make sure you're asking this. What's your project management strategy? And if they scratch their heads and are like, well, we thought you would just do that, how many want to spend all day wrangling people in emails? <laughs> yeah, project managers do that for a living. So if they have a good PM team, great. Plug into their Asana and away you go. If they don't, well, know that you're going to charge for that too. It's up to you. You can fill in the blank for any other thing you can think of. That is a short list. Again, my goal here isn't to be the product expert or the subject expert. My goal here is to start a conversation with you. Because if you just want to focus in on the one thing you want to do, there's only so many hours in the day to do it. And if we can get through the whole process and get just to delivery super fast, you can spend all day doing this, doing whatever you said, I want to wear this hat. But we can't waste our time doing piecemeal discovery with everyone in the world. And we'll save a lot of time with those discovery processes if we disqualify people that don't have their game together and aren't ready to work with you yet. Or sell them the services to make them ready to work with you. Because at the end of the day, their goal needs to be met. And that goal is the thing they actually want to do. Because nobody actually wants a website. They want the results, which we can measure in KPIs. What, uh, what's that? Was that, a hint? that was a hint. That was a hint. Uh, a subtle, subtle. It was subtle, I know. Um, uh, again, I'm Dwayne. I work at Pantheon. I'm on Twitter. All my slides are at mcdwayne.com. Thanks. I want to have a conversation with you. Uh, I'm serious. If you have questions, Q&A type, I'm happy to answer. But I have a couple questions for you first, and then we're going to run around with who, who has the mic? Is there a mic? I guess I'll just repeat the question. It's fine. Um, uh, but who here? Charges for discovery. They raise your hand high if you charge for discovery. I look around the room. Everybody, everybody, everybody see? Who here does not do a paid discovery process that involves in a discovery process? Again, raise them high. Don't be ashamed. Don't be. There's, would someone that charges for discovery like to say a few words about why they charge for discovery? How is, why, why do you do that? Right there. Yeah, you get underpaid and wasting time, not sure if you can do it or not. Does that depend on the same project or brand new client you've never dealt with before? That was a question for you, actually. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal focus back up here just just because it was a very large room. If it was like 
30 of us in a very small room. We just keep it going like that. Um, someone that doesn't charge for discovery. Is there anybody that specifically doesn't charge for discovery because they made the business decision not to? They like went down that path and it didn't work. Or, or there's just a reason you don't. Okay. So a lot of that is kind of dictated on the broad business scale change we're marketing over one world to another. another. So we did have one client in particular where we did a really, where we did a lot of stuff really in depth, both marketing and non marketing. And then we just got to the point like, look, if you don't even have a signed contract with you yet, you know, we're not going to give you more than just get a signed contract. Yeah. You know, we've, we've already done more than we normally do. So. Uh, th thank you for those uh, didn't hear that. Um, works in house. They do have paid clients. They're willing to do free discovery and free uh, not free work, but uh, original scope out. But if it turns out we're getting scope creep come in, then we're uh, going to go back and do a paid discovery. I think it's important to point out it's more than just marketing. It's basically anything that's on social media. Yeah. It, it, thank you very much for making that point. That's actually a point I wanted to make. This isn't just about marketing. <laughs> This is for every project you ever work on. That's why I said generic project funnel. It doesn't matter if it's a website. It doesn't matter if it's a um, online anything. It doesn't matter if it is literally how you're going to get cookies out to your employees. Any project goes through a project funnel because you only have so many hours in a day to do things. I saw a hand way in the back. You're going to have to yell. Okay, that, uh, that's the first time I've heard that answer, that it's a need-by-need -need project basis, um, or you do it on a per-project basis whether you do it or not. Um, and I, at this point, uh, oh yeah, good, good. He's, I'm sorry, can you speak up just a little more? Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that answer. Thank you very, very, very much. In added service, you are 100% correct. This is why I'm a huge fan of paid discovery. Um, for those of you who do paid discovery, I don't know this is a tall talk about qualification. We'll get back to it, I promise. Um, but for those paid discovery, what do you give them at the end of that paid discovery? Is there an artifact that is generated and created at the end of your process? Case by case, okay. Okay. Yep, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Every client loves color, it's true. Um, uh, but that, that, that is the heart of it right there. You're not selling them just arbitrary meeting time. You're selling them a process discovery where they can take an artifact, and if they don't want to work with you, maybe you don't want to work with them, they can take it and go wherever. Everyone's happy. They spent money to get their ducks in a row so they can go actually get a real project done, and I love that. All right, back to 
qualification process. Who here has a web intake form on their website, and if you want to work with you, they have to go through your form? How many hands? Everybody raise your hand if you do this. How long is this form? Just random, I just, just shout it out. Way too long. <laughs> long? Conditional. Absolutely. So tell us about the conditional one. So, I mean, it just depends on the scope of the project. If it's, uh, if it's something that's going to be a one page, uh, uh, simple. Uh, and just for the people in the back, do you mind speaking up just a little bit? Sure. Uh, it depends on the project. If it's a one page a landing page about a specific niche, uh, then it's not going to be as in depth. But if it's going to be multiple pages, pretty much each page is going to have its own questionnaire. Love it, love that. How much time does that save you overall, just in gut feeling? Immeasurable, I think. The night and day difference from before you did that to now, how many sales calls end with them saying that was a giant waste of time? Or with you saying that was a giant waste of time now? Now, none. None. Who here can say that every sales call they're on isn't a massive waste of time? Wait a minute, no, I said that wrong. <laughs> Who here only has successful sales calls? Even if it doesn't result in a sale, it wasn't a waste of time, it just wasn't a good fit. But who, you know, yeah, we've all, we've all been there. We've all, we've all been in sales calls like, why am I here? Why am I talking to this person? They don't, uh, they don't know what they're doing. Either side of that too, like clients don't know what they're doing more than I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Um, for those of you who don't have a web intake form, is there any kind of formal process that you go through to qualify a person that's been very successful for you that you'd like to share? <laughs> All right, I guess web intake forms are the only way to do it. Um, no, uh, it, it, there's a billion ways up this tree. That was my point here. Uh, and I was hoping somebody would share an anecdote or two, but um, there's not one way up this mountain. And that's why, again, I can't be a subject matter expert in this because there's no one true subject matter expert in any of this stuff. I have years of experience of doing this over and over again, and I want to spend all my time fighting procurement to get that check at the end if I'm just doing the sales part. Oh, you had a question? Oh, yeah, I thought you were standing up to say something. Um, with that, those are my questions to you. I'm always interested in those two big questions, intake forms and discovery. What questions do you have? Right there. I got a comment. You mentioned uh, smart goals. Smart goals. So, uh, your R for that is relevance. Relevancy. How often do smart goals go realistic? Oh. Okay. Maybe another number would be uh more realistic sales. Okay, where where's where's my oh, oh sorry. There it goes. Um I've always seen that as attainable, but you're right. If it's if it's not something you can actually do, if it's not realistic, don't don't start. Again, this is why smart goals are easy to understand. Like who here doesn't understand what's on the slide? Anybody? Exactly. Or you're just embarrassed to raise your hand. But specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. Relevant, I, so you might be thinking, hey, this is a great talk for people that have outside clients. I was given this talk in the Drupal world, and my buddy over there in the, uh, works for a company called Genuine, Mike Miles, he came to me a few months after I gave the talk, really the first time I ever gave it, and he's like, this has helped me immensely internally. He's a lead developer of this company. Because now when he gets a work request that he doesn't understand why he's doing it, he goes back and asks what the business value is. What were they actually trying to accomplish? And several times he said, he has stopped work dead in his tracks, moved to a completely different solution, and the customer was thrilled, doing backflips so happy, because they actually got what they wanted. Not just a new form on a web page, they got a new way to engage with their customers that they didn't think of. They, they, don't, they don't know how to think about these things. My other talks about discovery and storytelling um, and understanding of the points of story, if they knew how to come up to you and say, I would like you to design me a React front end for, uh, a, um, for a WordPress website that's gonna be on the back end. We're gonna have 16 pieces of content and they're just gonna give you all the technical specs and you just have to implement it. 
that's amazing, but that doesn't exist. <laughs> it just doesn't. They're paying you to figure out how to take that idea they have on a napkin and turn it into money. A website might do it. It might not. But we got to measure these things. And that's the whole point of this. If we can't measure it, we can't improve it. And then we never know we're done. All right, one more question, and then we're just going to be done. Over there. I personally feel that comes down to communication with project management. Um, if you don't have a dedicated scrum master or project manager, it's almost impossible to keep a project aligned. Um, because everyone will start building their own fiefdoms back up. That's a whole other talk of the fiefdoms inside of, a, inside of any company. Um, but if you have a person, a taskmaster, whose job it is to make sure they stay aligned, they'll stay aligned. Yeah, um, I highly, highly recommend uh, looking into Scrum training. Um, it feels like a buzzword, Agile feels like a buzzword right now, but the core fundamental things of the Agile Manifesto are true. We need to favor people over processes. We need to have better communication and feedback loops. Who here thinks DevOps is about tools? It's not, it's about, it's about communication between all of the users. If you're not getting feedback immediately and often on everything you do, there's no way you're knowing if it's working or not and you have no way to iterate on it. And that's what Scrum is all about and Agile is all about at its heart is let's figure out how the thing works and keep it working and let's iterate to make it better. And if you don't have someone actively, actively, actively doing that and forcing you down that road and keeping you in check and honestly keeping everybody honest, then people will go back into their fiefdoms and the numbers will drift apart again. And that's just, that's reality. So if you haven't had that conversation with your company of like, can we look at Scrum training Highly recommend doing it. It's not that expensive, and it will literally be a game change for how you work internally. Oh, oh good thing you ask. I, I left it on the conversation time slide, and I meant to leave it on this one. Uh, mcduane.com is my website. They're also going to be on the uh, WordCamp Phoenix website, linked from the event. Same exact slides if you go to the website and look for this talk. All right, well with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the conversation. I always learn something every time I do this, and thank you so much. If you wanna to talk to me more, <laughs> happiness bar.